Good afternoon, YouTube, and welcome back to Fat Cat Collections. And today I want to share with you guys um, just a quick video about something that I've done uh, that I think brings a nice level of ambiance uh, as far as lighting to my house and, of course, uh, some functionality. And what I want to show you is my smart fireplace. Now, this is something that anybody can do. It's super affordable to do. And if you already have one of these, it's pretty much a no-brainer. Um, and what I've done is just, if we come over to here, because I get a lot of people ask me about the fireplaces lately. Um, I have several of these in my house here. And this is basically just an inexpensive, um, I'd say about two to $300 uh, fireplace. And what I've done is I've added a sawn-off switch to it. And you can add a solo switch or any smart, uh, smart socket for the most part uh, to a device like this and have it uh, with voice control. So I can just say, hey Google, turn on the office fireplace. Sure. And you can see the fireplace turns on. Now one thing that I always do is that most of these fireplaces have your ambiance mode, which is generally what I use them for in a lot of cases or you have your heater on mode. And every one's a little bit different. Uh, this particular one runs at, I believe it's about 1300, 12, 12 or 1300 watts. And so you want to make sure whatever smart plug you use is capable of handling that kind of wattage. Now, most of the ones that I've reviewed can handle up to about 1700 watts. So if you have a 1200 watt fireplace, you're not gonna have any kind of issues. Uh, one thing I always do is I keep the heating element off. And this is, a, on mine I have a switch right here. So I can turn it on. Now you have a lot of hot air coming out or you can turn it off and I just have it on for ambiance mode. Um, you know, I don't like to leave devices that could potentially come on. I'm not saying I've ever had the problem of any of my smart devices automatically coming on by themselves, but, you know, if I was at home and this thing came on and it was in heater mode, I wouldn't want to be wasting a lot of energy and potentially having something like this on uh, when I'm not home. So, I leave it in ambiance mode and I can turn on my voice just for, I mean, I think it looks amazing, you know, and, uh, you know, it's functional. So, I can say, hey, Google. Hey Google, turn off the office fireplace, okay. and it's off. And this one here is this one here I picked up um, off eBay. I'll put links in the description. I went ahead and got one that was actually um, an oak color, which I knew I was going to be painting it. I got it for such a good deal. I didn't like the way the oak looked, so I basically just took my spray gun and I uh, I sprayed it white. So uh, now I used a high volume, um, was it one of the high volume airless spray guns. I was able to take the fireplace insert out, which is really easy to do, and uh, just customize it with that white look. And I got this thing, I mean, rock bottom. It was like 130 bucks. So it was a no-brainer. I said, this is going to look great in my office. And I just went ahead and added a couple uh, flux Bluetooth bulbs over that and a couple lamps and, you know, some, some art that I like. And uh, that's it, really. Uh, moving on into my bedroom. You have to excuse the mess. I have not made the bed today. Uh, coming over to my other fireplace here. This one's a little taller. It's got the dark wood and this one I just kept it natural. Um, this one same thing. I could say, hey Google, turn on the bedroom fireplace. Okay, turning on the bedroom And so fireplace. it kicks on. Now one thing you'll notice is that the ceiling fan also kicked on and that's because I'm using IFTTT with this and that's if this then that. It's a free website you can go to. Hang on one second. Hey Google, Turn off the bedroom fan. Sure, turning off the bedroom fan. Hey Google, turn off the bedroom fireplace. You got it. All right, so the now we get that out of the way. And so again, this one's hooked up to a sewn off switch. And what I have this thing set, I I found that whenever I you know when I go to bed, I like to leave the fireplace on. I have it in ambiance mode. Sometimes if it gets real cold, it's winter, I will turn on the heating element. Uh, this fireplace is kind of cool because it actually has. And not many, uh, not many have, have this. Um, it actually has a thermostat built in and then it has two different heating modes. You have your 750 watt or your 1500 watt mode. So I generally just leave it uh, in the 800 watt mode or 750 mode because it produces enough, enough hot air just using that. But what's nice about this particular one is that if you have a situation where uh, you have a lot of electronics on the same circuit, uh, sometimes, you know, a 1500 watt fireplace could potentially trip your breaker depending on what you have hooked into that that line uh, In my case, I have my TV in here I used to have a plasma in here which drew, drew a lot more wattage But I have a lot of different devices in here. So having this run at 750, uh, you know, prevents any kind of uh, tripping of the breaker Although in my office, uh, even when I have that on, I have never tripped the breaker yet But just something to think about again heating element off just in case this thing came on for whatever reason 
I have also have it set that uh, at around like seven o'clock when I when I get in bed and you know time for night night that this fireplace will automatically come on and like I said that triggers the fan to come on because I sleep with that on a daily basis. Uh, pretty cool. I mean, I think it's an awesome way just to put some uh, kind of smart, I guess, a smart technology into something like this. Um, that's about it, really. That's what I've done with those fireplaces. I have another idea that I might potentially do at a later date, and that might be to integrate maybe some LED lighting. Um, not really sure yet. Another thing you can do is if you have one of these fireplaces or if you're going to buy one of these, I do recommend that you go ahead and I went ahead and upgraded the lights. And these fireplaces have a couple candle lights. Um, they're the smaller base lights inside them. Everyone's different. This one had two, and they were each 40 watts. And so what I did is I replaced those with a couple 40 watt equivalent LEDs. So now this thing hardly draws any power. What are we drawing? Like seven watts maybe, if even that. So another way to really put some efficiency uh, into your home. And I'm all about having cool stuff, but also having it not cost a lot. And this one here, I do still need to do that, but I don't use this one as much as the bedroom fireplace. So eventually I'll replace the LEDs in this as well. Now one other thing I want to show you before I wrap this video uh, about smart fireplaces is if we come downstairs, I also have a gas fireplace. And this one here, I opted not to do anything smart on it because this one here is controlled by a low voltage switch. You basically turn on that switch. It's different than your standard wall switch. It's not, it just looks like a standard wall switch, but it's a low voltage uh, switch that basically triggers, I believe it's a solenoid in here to turn on the fireplace or a relay of some sort. Um, I didn't want to have anything in here that could potentially turn this on when I'm not home and be just, you know, wasting gas. Again, these things will probably never happen, but it's just a mental thing for me. I don't like to have anything plugged into a smart device that, uh, like a coffee maker is the same kind of thing. I don't think I'd feel comfortable having a coffee maker plugged into um, a smart device. Although I used to have one plugged into an X10, but I just use a Keurig every day. It turns on and turns off. So, I mean, you can do it. A lot of people do it. It's not, you know, I mean, if I went back to brewing a whole pot of coffee and, and not use the Keurig, I, I guess I probably would use that because it is convenient. Uh, if you're in bed, you can just say, hey, you know, turn on the coffee maker and you can have your coffee brewing. Uh, so, but with this, I, you know, I just opted not to do anything here. Some guys have, were able to use a relay and you can wire that in uh, and basically use like a, um, you could use a cell phone adapter, a USB cable and a relay to basically, and a smart switch to basically duplicate what that switch does. Um, I didn't want to do that, but one thing I will say that if you may feel differently about it, if you do want to make your fireplace smart, a really easy way to do it without having to wire anything in is basically just to go ahead and get one of the, uh, and I forget the name of it, I'll go upstairs and I'll check. It's an over-the-switch smart device that runs on Bluetooth. And so basically it just mounts to the top, has a motor in it. They're really affordable, they're like under 50 bucks, and you just grab your cell phone and flip the, you know, turn it on using Bluetooth as opposed to Wi-Fi, and a motor will actually flip the switch and turn it on or off. And I forget the name of those, but um, I'll put a link in the description uh, if that is something you want to integrate into your home. I opted not to do that. Because for me, I mean, it's pretty easy for me to, you know, with the range of Bluetooth, uh, it's pretty easy for me if I'm sitting on the couch to just get up and turn on the fireplace. It's not that far away. So, but it is just a cool factor. Uh, you know, if you want to do that, I, I won't knock you for it. All right, guys. Well, that is my video on uh, smart fireplaces to kind of give you guys a couple ideas if you want to integrate some of these things into your home. Um, I'm always trying to come up with new ideas to, uh, to make things voice controlled or to make things... Um, um, you know, just smarter. Um, like I said, I love the ability to turn on my lights, turn off my lights, schedule them. Uh, it's really awesome. It brings a lot of convenience into my life. And, you know, it's nice that also if I'm, let's say I'm at work and, you know, there's been times where I've left in the morning and I'm like, gosh, did I turn off that light? Did I close the garage door? Did I, you know, did I turn off the fireplace with the fan? And I come home, the fan's still, you know, running 60 watts the entire day while I'm at work. So with this, it's great because I can check it. I can see the status on my phone. Oh, I left it on, or let's say it didn't turn off or whatever, I could turn it off remotely. So, all right, guys, well, thanks again for watching. I'll put links to all the products you'll need to do this. I'm going to put a couple different links. I'm going to give you one from, um, I would recommend using the iView plug on this here. Uh, great price. I have a deal with the manufacturer for 30% off using my discount code. It'll handle up to 1,700 watts, and it does have a power switch as well, and you don't have to wire it in like a Sonoff plug. If you want to go the inexpensive route, uh, it's going to save you half the price. You can go to Sonoff Plug, but you need to buy an extension cord about $1.50. So 
Uh, with the price of these things coming down, I mean, if I added more stuff to my smart home, I'd most likely just go with the iView plugs because they, uh, I mean, $13 shipped as opposed to roughly $7.00 and I don't have to wire anything in or connect any kind of extension cord. So I'll put links for that one in the description. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. As always, guys, have a wonderful day. Take care.